Hey everybody, this is D Hunter for another action figure review. Today, we're going to look at the NECA Gargoyles Goliath and Demona Vows Ultimate Action Figure 2 Pack. Now, I actually ordered this thing at BestBuy.com. It's in stock right now, to my surprise. They had it before anybody else. This is a two pack with Goliath and Demona, which have already had releases, but this one will have new accessories, and faces, and who knows what else. I'm a huge fan of the Gargoyles TV show. Packaging looks fantastic on this, so let's take a look. As you can see at the front, we have a large picture of the Phoenix Gate. Disney's Gargoyles, Goliath and Demona, Vows, Ultimate, Action Figure 2 Pack. Top, pretty much same thing. One side of the package, got Demona holding the Phoenix Gate. Other side, Goliath holding a mace. At the back, you can see Goliath and Demona holding the Phoenix Gate together. I accept your token, my angel of the night, and vow that you and I are one, now and forever. They used to be in love, then became bitter enemies. You can see Goliath and Demona together, a bunch of different display options and accessories, and here is pretty much the rest of the line. Now at the front, you can open it up, the Phoenix Gate, exposing the two figures. Like I said, presentation is fantastic. If you go further back, the cardboard has the two of them holding each piece of the Phoenix Gate which you do get both intact and separate in this. So, with no further ado, let's open them up. All right, now that these figures out of the package, here they are with all their accessories laid out. They come with a ton of cool stuff, most notably the Phoenix Gate. And not only that, but two versions, one intact and one broken in two. Now, we've already received a Goliath and Demona figure, but there are a ton of new parts here. Each figure has four different interchangeable faces. We have a couple of Demona signature weapons, the mace, and a laser gun. They both come with folded wings, and we already received them from both the characters, so that doesn't excite me too much. But I'd say the Phoenix Gate is the coolest thing here, and a bunch of interchangeable parts that should have worked with the previous figures. Goliath here has interchangeable faces, which they didn't do before, so bring new stuff to the table to enhance your collection. In this video, we're going to take a look at each of the figures, one by one. We'll check out their accessories, height, and articulation, and we'll compare them with a bunch of other Gargoyle figures. So, let's start off with the man himself, Goliath. So here's Goliath. He comes with two different heads, four alternate face plates, four alternate hands, totaling six interchangeable hands, a tail, and some wings. Goliath is the clan leader. He's the strongest, the biggest Gargoyle. Him and Demona used to be lovers, now they're enemies. Huge theme to this two-pack. So let's take a look. Starting with his face, he has that signature look. That sort of flat haircut, really long, very strong muscular figure. He just struck me as a little bit paler than I believe he's supposed to be, but we'll compare him with the other Gargoyle Goliath figures here in a little bit and see what's up. Nice muscle definition. They do a really good job of sort of mixing the animated look and sprinkling in some realism, and I really appreciate that. I think it's awesome. Double jointed elbows, looks like single jointed knees, little talon feet. He's got the loincloth. It all looks really good, although, like I said, just kind of strike me as a little bit pale in this guy. And a closer look at his face and head sculpt. And here's the figure, broken down as far as he can go with all of his removal parts detached. Two different sets of hair, four different faces, a ton of display options. Now the only thing I'm surprised they didn't come with in this set is the outstretched sort of hard plastic wings. It'd be nice if you didn't have the figure before to be able to have both sets of wings in here and for the price they definitely should have included it. Now let's check out his accessories. And let's start off with his hands. He has a total of six different hands four right hands and two left hands. Here he is with his first set of hands. These are his fists. Then with his second set of hands, these could be some climbing, scratching, or grabbing hands. And he has two additional right hands. Here he is with a right gripping hand with a smaller grip. And here, another right gripping hand with a larger grip. Now let's check out and attach his tail. So here's his tail. It's made of sort of a rubbery material you can see it's got these holes in the back to breathe. The tail has a bendy wire in it. You can allow it to take different shapes and poses. Here's the little peg that'll plug into his rear end. It's hinged and it can rotate. Here's Goliath with a tail attached. 
You can see the back here plugs in, like I said. It can rotate. It's also hinged. The tail looks really nice on the gargoyle, but it also helps him stand. The gargoyle is going to be a little bit top heavy at times. He does have big feet, but he can lean against a tail and it allows him to stand very easily. Now, speaking of standing up, here are their feet. Now, it's really easy to stand them up when they're flat like so, but that is not the way gargles are supposed to stand. They have this talon on the back of the foot, and in the show, they would stand like so. Put the foot basically as far down as you can, and then put the toes forward, and that is how they stood in the show. So if you want to stand up the gargoyles a prop way, it makes them a little bit taller, but it also makes it a little bit harder for them to stand up, thus making the tail pretty nice and helping utilize that. Like I said, that's how they stand in the show. Now let's check out his wings. I refer to these wings as cloaked wings or cape wings. It sort of drapes around his front, but it's really going to hinder the articulation. Now the original Goliath had his outstretched wings, and those were way too big. They're hard plastic. They didn't really fit to the back properly. They kind of got loose over time. What I want is what I call relaxed wings, which are sort of upright behind them. Hopefully we'll get a wing pack or something like that in the future. But in the meantime, the cloak wings are the best we're going to get. So as you can see, it also has kind of a rubbery material, a lot of bend to it. He's got his little sort of claws or talons here, pegs for the back, shiny, almost scaly. It looks very nice. But like I said, it does sort of limit the articulation a little bit. Here's Goliath with his cloaked wings. It looks pretty good around him. You can still move the arms somewhat up and down, but the shoulders, not very much. Now the wings make it a little bigger back here and sort of pushes up on his hair and cause him to kind of look down some. But the faceplate seems to kind of offset that a little bit. It's plugged in all the way right now. I mean, you can manipulate that a little bit and I'm looking forward. It's really not too bad. I mean, that's about how he looks. And here's his Goliath wearing the outstretched wings from the original Goliath release. They're very tight and snug right now, but who knows how they'll be in a couple weeks. Once again, I'm a little bit surprised they didn't come with the outstretched wings. Now to look at his different heads, hair, and faces. He has two different base heads that the faces will attach to. One has the hair all the way back, and one has it a little bit unkept, like he's moving around. Then he has four different faces. The first one has a regular expression, pretty stern. Second one, a slight smile. Third one, pretty angry expression. And the fourth one, an even angrier expression. Here's Goliath with his first head. This one has the hair back, a little bit more of a traditional neutral look for Goliath. And here's his alternate base head. This one has the different hair. It's a little bit less kept, a little more wild. I'll probably pick this Goliath to stay like this since I already have the other hair with the other Goliath. That way there's some more differences with them. And now to check out all of his different faces. Here's his first face. This one has the most neutral expression. Here's his second face. This one has a slight smile. Looks kind of villainous. Then here's his third face. This one has the angry expression. And here's his fourth face. This one has an angry expression. His mouth is open. He's screaming. Whether he's attacking or in pain, up to you. Now the original Goliath only had two different heads. The faces were permanently attached. They both have the same kind of hair. One had a normal expression, that's about the same as this one. And then we had the growly one. This one is a little bit different from the current growly one. You can see the mouths are open at a different amount. And then this one has the wide eyes. This is the only Goliath head that have the wide eyes. When they're angry or fighting, a lot of the time their eyes would be glowing. So giving you even more display options that are interchangeable between both the new and previous release. Now I wanted to check out the differences between this new Vals 2-pack Goliath and the original version. The new one is on the left, the old one on the right. I went ahead and put his original headpiece back on. It's similar to this guy's. So the expressions, it looked to be exactly the same. Now, I will say this one is a little bit paler than the original. It's not like crazy, crazy different, but I guess I'm really used to this guy. So as soon as I saw him, I was kind of like, oh, that looks a little pale. It's not bad though. It's 100% the same figure up here. Of course, this guy does have a lot of different options for his head, whereas he only has two. He has four, plus the different heads, which could give him a total of eight different display options with his face. It's 100% the same figure, same sculpt, same articulation. 
Now my old one is getting kind of loose, so it's really nice to have a nice fresh Goliath for the collection. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at both the figure and his accessories, now for his height. From bottom to the top of his head, standing right at 8 inches tall, which can translate to just over 20 centimeters. Now keep in mind, that's when he's standing on his feet properly, a little bit taller. He's 8 inches tall, and this is a 7 inch scale figure, meaning he's probably 7, 7.5 seven feet tall. Gargoyles are bigger than their average man. And now for his articulation. Starting with his head, of course it can rotate side to side, look up and down, not too much, but a little bit. And when you have the wings back there, it kind of restricts that even more. You can tilt his head just a tiny bit from side to side. Shoulders, ball joint goes out less than 90 degrees. Up, down, around, all that good stuff. He's got bicep cut below that, rotates about that much. Double jointed elbows, they went about that far. His wrist, it can rotate and it is hinged as well. His torso, he's got a ball joint. Rotate around, forward and back, although you don't get a ton there. In his waist, he has another ball joint. Rotate around, forward and back. Between the two, it's still kind of limited compared to what I expect, but at least it's not loose. Legs, complete as splits. We have ball joints inside of there. He can rotate independently against the ball. Then you go forward, about that much. Back, not much. He's got single jointed knees, but they go in more than 90 degrees with rotation. And then his ankle, forward and back, tilt rock. And then his toes, forward and back, also tilt rock. We also have his tail. Of course, it has the bendy wire. It can rotate and it's going to be hinged. Here's this new Goliath on the left, next to the original version on the right. And here he is, next to the video game version of Goliath. And now, next to Thalog, his evil clone, which also uses the exact same mold as Goliath. Here are all the figures they've done so far, using the Goliath mold. Video game, couple regular, and then Thalog. Now the next one they're going to be releasing is another variant of the video game Goliath. And I hope in the future they give us an armored version of Thalog. Here he is in front of the old school Kenner's Gargoyle Castle Wyvern. I am so happy I kept this diorama playset from all these years ago. I used to use it as a racial ghoul castle in my Batman Action Figure world. This thing does fold open, giving you more castle area for background purposes. And it also has an interior if you flip it around. Here's Goliath inside of the Kenner's Gargoyle Castle. He's definitely too big for it, but it still looks pretty cool. Here's Goliath perched on top of the old Kenner's Gargoyle Castle. I also have this older Van Helsing Dracula Castle. A little undersized for Goliath, but he definitely fits in nonetheless. And then, in front of the Mattel He-Man Masters of the Universe Castle Grayskill. This is the one intended for 6 inch scale figures. This thing also folds open, giving you a large exterior and an even larger interior. I have definitely got my castles covered from our gargoyle collection. Here's Goliath inside Castle Grayskull. He actually scales up decently in this thing. Here's Goliath in the recently released Extreme Sets Dungeon Cardboard Pop-Up. This is a dungeon or castle type setting. I think it is perfect for these gargoyles. It's very roomy and large. As I get more of the Manhattan clan, this will be a great background diorama for them. Here's Goliath perched on top of a rooftop overlooking Manhattan. Here's Goliath taking on a couple of McFarland Witcher figures. I thought they made for some good old school gargoyle hunters. Here's a couple of McFarland DC Multiverse Batman and Hellbent armor figures. They're taking on Goliath. They look kind of similar to Xanatos of Steel Clan robots. This McFarlane at DC Multiverse Azrael totally reminds me of one of the hunters from Gargoyles. Now let's check out Demona. Demona comes with even more stuff than Goliath. She has removable wings, five alternate hands, totaling seven interchangeable hands, a total of three different faces, her tail, she's got a laser gun, a mace, which is one of her signature weapons throughout the show, and then the Phoenix Gate. The Phoenix Gate has two pieces, one is intact, and then two is a broken one. So you can actually have two entire Phoenix Gates at the same time, or have it split in half. Before I take a look at all that, 
let's talk about and check out the figure. Demona is Goliath's old love interest. A thousand years ago, it was Angel of the Night, and in modern times, they are bitter enemies. Demona is sort of a hateful, spiteful, bitter old woman. She hates humans and wants to kill them all, but Goliath believes in best in humanity. So let's take a look. She's played by Marina Sirtis, another Star Trek veteran, just like Xanatos. And I feel like there's hints of Marina Sirtis' face here. I like it a lot. She's got her little tiara or crown. The red hair is spiky. It looks a little weird, but it's kind of hard to capture that in plastic form. She's got pointed elf ears, actual sort of earrings on there. And I will note, I watched the episode Vows last night, and the younger version of Demona did not have the earrings. The older one did, so I guess it's intended to be the older one. But if you have two of them, you can pretend one's the old one, one's the young one. Texturing is very nice in her outfit. They have a ball joint that's hidden pretty nicely up inside of there. It all looks pretty good. Double jointed knees, double jointed elbows, another little ring around her leg here. And the one here, I believe is just sort of plastic sculpted on top. As a whole, she looks nice, same kind of feet. And a closer look at her face and head sculpt. She has a similar plumb as Goliath, where the long hair in the back sort of makes her look down sometimes. This is the best you're going to get looking forward, but she has no wings on right now either. Still, face looks very good, very well done. Looks like the show, but not exactly like the show. They sort of added their little NECA zone touch of realism, and I love it. And here she is, broken down as far as she can go, with all of her removal parts detached. Now check out those accessories, and let's start off with her hands. She has a total of seven hands. Four right hands and three left hands. Here she is with the first pair of hands. These are some climbing, clawing, or grabbing hands. And here she is with her second pair of hands. The right hand is a gripping hand with a fairly large grip. And the left hand could potentially hold something. It would be a good hand to support like her laser cannon that the single release came with. She has one additional right hand. It's another gripping hand with a smaller grip. And then she also has two fists. Now let's look at her faces. She has four of them. The first one has kind of a regular expression. The second one, I don't know, she looks kind of curious, kind of surprised, kind of interested. The third one has sort of smile. She looks kind of mischievous, villainous. And the last one, she's angry, looks kind of bitter. I'd say the first three, you could use almost any of them to be the younger Demona, but the last one is definitely only for the older Demona. And the original version of Demona had two faces, one with a regular expression, which is the same as that face in this pack, and then one with the angry, growling, and eye-glowing expression. I'm surprised this one didn't come with that. Here she is, with her first head. This one has the normal expression. And here's her second face. At first glance, I thought she was kind of curious or surprised, but it looks like she could be starting to get angry. When I first saw this face, I thought, this looks kind of like the young Demona. When she sees the old Demona, she doesn't really know what's going on. She's kind of angry with her. But it could also be the older Demona, just starting to get angry. And here's her third face. This one has a smiling expression. Dude could be the young Demona, happy to see her lover again. Or it could be the old Demona, happy one of her plans is going exactly as she expected. And then her fourth face. She has a sort of sick, annoyed expression. Kind of how she looks at Goliath. You make me sick. You're disgusting with all your positive feelings toward humanity. Now let's take a look at her tail. Very similar to Goliath, a little bit smaller. Rubber material, little holes to breathe. Bendy wire for different poses. It's got the plug, which will rotate and be hinged as well. Here's Demona with her tail attached. Helps her stand, fix her feet, can rotate, and is hinged. And now for her wings. You can see the hands crossed over, little talons at the front. Got some pegs in the back, little spikes at the top. Now it's not connected to the back, very free flowing. The texturing is fantastic on the inside, kind of black and purple. On the outside, it's shiny, scaly, sort of blue and black. They look very, very nice. Here's Demona with the cloaked wings attached. I love how it's draped in the front, the two little hands are on top of each other. Back, it looks good. Now, the way they position it, sort of open in the middle. These cloaked wings do a really good job of not forcing her to look down. The hair fits between them pretty nicely. Hard plastic wings, not quite so much. Here's Demona, utilizing the hard plastic outstretched wings from the single release. I always have this problem, at least with a couple of the figures, where the wings just don't stay in. They're not very snug or tight after a little while. Demona's one of the worst ones. 
I actually have a wing propped up on the brick here before it just sags right down. My buddy told me if I shove just a tiny piece of cardboard in there, it'll really sort of tighten it up and then I'll have no problem. I need to get on that. The original Demona only came with the outstretched wings, no cloaked wings. You got those later if you bought the Xanatos and business suit figure. I actually bought two of those Xanatoses as I wanted an extra business suit like that. So I gave the cloaked wings to the original Demona. We have the cloaked wings for the two pack that came with this Demona. And then I gave the extra cloaked wings from extra Xanatos to Angela. And that's why I would have done these wings if I hadn't done that in the past. So, a lot of different things you can use with Demona's cloaked wings. Now let's look at her rifle. This is a laser weapon. It's mostly blue, has some black, decent sculpting to it. It once again kind of has a semi-animated, semi-realistic look to it. Here's Demona holding that weapon. She has her gripping hand with a trigger finger under the handle and the other hand supporting the barrel. Now let's look at her mace. Like I said, it's one of her signature weapons. She used that a thousand years ago in the old days and in the modern day as well. So we have the ball on the top. It's got spikes in it, looks pretty good. It's got the wooden handle and then wrap where she's gonna hold it. And then here's Demona holding that mace. Now for the Phoenix Gate, which is one of the coolest things this set comes with. It's a little medallion or talisman here. It's a Phoenix Gate. It's got, I guess the Phoenix on the inside. It's supposed to be sort of gold trimmed. Paint job could be a little better, a little shinier. Backside's pretty blank. And we have the second one here, and it's in two separate pieces. In the show, Goliath and Demona, they sort of broke one apart. I said, we'll keep one, you keep one. They had their vows, they were in love, etc., etc. Kind of their way of exchanging. Not exactly a ring, but something physical. So it's really cool that you can actually have two of these. In the episode of Vows, there was an older version of Demona that went back in time to her younger version. Her younger version had stolen the Phoenix Gate, and she was going to give it to the Archmage, and they actually both had one at the same time, so it's really cool to be able to reenact that and have two of them. You can have Goliath holding one, Demona holding one with the broken one. You can have them holding the attacked one. Goliath had it at one point, Demona had it at one point, the Archmage had it at one point. Pretty cool. And then we finally have these three talismans. The Grimorum, the Book of Spells, the Phoenix Gate, the allows to go back in time, and then the Eye of Odin. Now, they could have done a better job with the Eye of Odin. They're missing this sort of blue gem that goes in the middle. But it's really cool to have all three of these things. In the Avalon storyline, the Archmage incorporated all these into his body and got very, very powerful. Here's Demona holding the Phoenix Gate. And then here's both Goliath and Demona holding a piece of the Phoenix Gate. Keep your vows. Never forget them. Now I wanted to check out the new Demona next to the single release. The new one is on the left. So, a little bit less differences in the skin tone than the two Goliaths. She's about on point. The faces have the same expression. Hair pretty much looks the same. They both have the real earrings. It's really no differences. I mean, maybe it's an ever so slight lighter shade of blue on this one. But she has a definitely a bunch of different looks. And she even has a unique look herself. But as is right now, pretty much exactly the same. Next, for her height. From bottom to the top of her head, standing about 7.7 .7 inches tall, which can translate to 19 and a half centimeters, just slightly shorter than Goliath. And now for articulation. Start with her head, ball joint, rotate around, the hair can go all the way over. She can't look up anymore, but down quite a bit. Can't tilt her head one side to the other. Shoulders, ball joint, goes out 90 degrees. Up, down, around. Bicep cut, although it does not move very much. Double jointed elbows, they go all the way in. Her wrist can rotate, and it is hinged as well. Ball joint or torso, rotate around, forward and back. Another one on her waist. And that one's very tight, rotate a little bit, forward and back, and not really. So, kind of limited on the waist there, not bad though. Legs complete as splits, ball joints. Legs rotate independently against the ball. They go forward, not that much. Back, not at all. Double jointed knees below that. And then her ankle, forward and back. Also tilt rock. Her toes, forward and back. And also tilt and rock. Here's a look at both Goliath and Demona holding the Phoenix Gate together, making their vows. Here's Demona walking up to you with her claws out and her angry face. Here's Demona 
climbing up the side of a building. And here's Demona on a rooftop overlooking Manhattan. Here's Demona on top of a castle looking down. Here's Demona in her lover's arms. Goliath is holding her. This would have been a thousand years ago when they were a couple. This works a lot better without the wings. And then a thousand years later, she falls in love with the clone of Goliath, Thalog. Of course, Thalog's a tricky bastard and betrays even Demona. Now let's check him out. Next to some other action figures. Starting off with some other Gargoyles figures. Here's the new Vows 2-pack Goliath and Demona in the center. Next to the original version of Goliath and Demona on the outside. One cool thing about this pack, you can use two of the figures as Goliath and Demona from modern day and age, and you can use two of them as their younger versions from a thousand years ago. A lot of different options here. Kind of cool. At least they give you a bunch of new accessories. So Goliath was the first Gargoyle figure they made, and of course it makes sense. He's the main character on the show. The original Goliath is the far one here on the left. The second figure they made in the line was Thalog, and that's made with the Goliath sculpt. And then they made another version of Goliath here, that's a video game version. And now we have the two-pack version of Goliath. The next Goliath should be another variant of the video game version, and there are a ton of different ones they could make in the future. After Goliath and Thalog, they released Demona. After that, they gave us both Bronx and Hudson, a couple more members to round out the clan. They didn't really waste a lot of time finishing the main members of the clan. They gave us Broadway and Brooklyn, and later Lexington. And while at that time, the original clan was complete, Shortly after, they gave us Angela, a later addition to the Glide clan. They also gave us the Steel Clan robot and Xanatos in his red Steel Clan armor. More villains for Goliath and the clan to fight. I actually got six of Steel Clan robots. Xanatos has his clan, Goliath has his. This is the only armor builder they've made so far in the Gargoyles line, and I hope they find another one to make. And recently, they made a couple of these human civilian type characters. We have David Xanatos in his business suit, and then Elisa Maza in her jeans and jacket. Absolutely fantastic and necessary addition to the Gargoyles collection. I hope they give us Owen as the next civilian type guy. Here's the entire neck of Gargoyles collection so far. I only included one Goliath and Demona in this group shot because they're pretty much the same figure, just with a couple of added accessories. Now, the next figures we know of coming out is going to be Broadway in his trench coat. I'm guessing he's the next one. Then we have Coldstone and Macbeth. And then Gabriel from the Avalon collection. I can't wait for more reveals. There's so much I want to see in this line, and I hope they make all of it. I'd say the stuff I really want to see would be Owen, the Mutates, and the Clones. They're pretty high on my list. But there's hundreds of other characters I would buy from this line. Fingers crossed that this goes really, really deep like the Ninja Turtles line did. Now let's check them out. Next to some action figures from different various companies. So we can see how they fit in, both scale and style-wise. In case you don't know which lines you can mix them with. Since they're NECA toys, they're typically the 7-inch scale. Even though these Gargoyles stand about 8 inches tall, they're 7-inch scale figures. They're a little bit larger than man. I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the larger action figure lines I collect. They work way smaller. But first, let's check them out with some of their NECA brothers and sisters. In front of you are five different X-ray lines, all from NECA toys, all 7-inch scale. And now, next to some Jack specific wrestling figures and some DST or Devon Select toys. Here they are, mixed with a couple of limes. And here they are, with some McFarlane and DC Direct figures. Then, with some Mattel and Jazzwares wrestling figures. And now, next to some Mezco and Mattel DC figures. Next, with some Mafex and Hasbro Marvel Legends. And finally, with some SH figure arts and some Jazz Wars Fortnite figures. So overall, both Goliath and Demona are excellent action figures. Very well done by NECA Toys. The only problem is, with this two-pack, if you already have the single figures, you're not getting a whole lot new. It's almost not worth getting. Yes, the new faces are good. The new accessories for Demona... The Mace, the Blaster, the Phoenix Gate. The Phoenix Gate in particular is absolutely fantastic, but it's such a small piece of plastic. It is the only way we're going to get it in the long run. That kind of sucks. For those hardcore Gargoyles fans out there and NECA Gargoyles completists, you won't mind because you're going to get everything. But for those that aren't, you might actually miss out on this Phoenix Gate. I imagine the Archmage will probably come with one, 
but time will tell. Both figures individually are fantastic, but like I said, if you're like me and you already have the original releases, it's not really worth getting, honestly. They do bring some new stuff to the table. Goliath's new hair, it doesn't force his head to look down like the old one does, so that's a huge improvement there. You have the cloaked wings for both these figures, so if you didn't get the other figures that come with the cloaked wings, that's pretty helpful. The extra faces, it's nice. And I guess it's nice that both the single releases have faces that this one doesn't come with, and this one has faces that doesn't come with. So if you get everything, at least you're getting something new with both sets. If I were to rate this set, say I didn't have the originals, I'd easily give this an 8 or 8.5 out of 10. Presentation's fantastic, the figures are fantastic, the accessories are great. But me personally, since I already have the other ones, I'm going to bump it down at least a full point because it's kind of underwhelming. You don't get a whole lot of new stuff. Given my rating, let's go ahead and just say a 7.5. Enjoying these guys quite a bit. My original Goliath got really loose in the wrist, so it's nice to have a new one. But it's just a lot of the same. I cannot wait for some new Gargoyle series to drop. It's been a while, and I can't wait for more reveals. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.